All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our BCBA task list series with behavior change procedures and use chaining. Chaining is when we take a complex skill, we break it down into teachable steps, and we teach using a chaining strategy. That analysis we conduct to create that chain is a task analysis. We're going to go over both ideas today. As always, check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Please subscribe if you haven't already for all of our updates. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard, and let's get going. So to start, what is a behavior chain? It's simply a series of responses that lead to a terminal outcome. When you watched our shaping video, we talked about the terminal behavior. Where shaping, we try to reach the terminal behavior, which is the final behavior we want to see. It's pretty similar with the chain. You're going to have a series of responses that ultimately ultimately lead to your final outcome. So if you have, let's say, this square is our response or our behavior, we're going to break this square down into pieces that we're going to teach using a chain. And so when we have our different steps, how does that chain actually work? Well, each response is going to produce reinforcement for that response. And at the same time, each response is going to produce the SD for the next response. So let's say we're going to do a hand washing analysis and teach hand washing. Let's say our first step is turning on the water. Turning on the water is going to produce reinforcement. And then it's going to produce the SD to signal that's now the time to put soap on hands because reinforcement is now available for soap on hands. Then in turn, soap on hands will be reinforced. It'll produce the SD for step number three, and we'll go on and on and on until we reach that terminal outcome. And ultimately, once all of those steps have been completed, we have our we have our complex skill that we've broken into smaller steps. So behavior chain is a very straightforward concept. Let's not overcomplicate that. Now, how do we get to a behavior chain? We have to conduct a task analysis. That's when we create the chains from these complex tasks. So for example, when you have a complex skill, you can break it into smaller teachable steps in several different ways. First, you can observe someone competent. We, we want to avoid, with the task analyses, looking at someone simply the same age as our learner, for example. Because if you're working with a five-year-old, another five-year-old might not be the best person to observe completing a skill, especially if the skill is rather difficult. At the same time, let's say you are working with an adult who has developmental delays. Well, just because that adult is a certain age doesn't necessarily mean other adults that age are going to be competent or the person we want to watch completing the skill. And so that's important to keep in mind when trying to choose, well, how am I going to analyze the complex skill? So the first way is observe someone competent. Who can complete the skill with competence? Second way. Ask an expert. An expert can obviously tell you a lot about the skill and the steps involved. Third, you can do the task yourself and analyze your steps, assuming you can actually do the skill yourself. And then four, trial and error. Just work through it, work through the skill until you get the steps right. Remember, all these steps should be very individualized per learner. And so now we have our analyses, right? We've broken the complex skill into teachable steps. How do we assess mastery? Because now we're going to teach using a chain. So we can assess mastery of the skill a couple of different ways. We can use single opportunity where we're going to end the probe if a step has failed. Meaning if I have a chain that has four steps and my learner fails step number three, well, we're going to end the probe here. But if we used multiple opportunities and we had one, two, three, four steps and the learner failed three, well, we would complete that step for them and push through to number four. Either way is acceptable. Again, it's going to be based on your assessments and your analysis of the situation and for your learner. Now, to get directly to chaining, because we have our steps, right? We have our steps and now we have to teach them. So there's three different types of chaining we can use. We can use forward, we can use backward, we can use total task. There are modifications to these chains, things like limited holds and these kind of ideas. But remember, with this series, we want to master the necessities. 
We want to master the fundamentals. Once you've mastered these fundamentals, then you go forward and you start thinking about limited holds and these ideas. But only once you are 100% fluent here. The complex ideas aren't going to be the thing that brings you down on test day. It's going to be a lack of fluency on the fundamentals. So let's start with forward chaining. We're going to teach behaviors in the naturally occurring order. So let's say you want to make a sandwich. We're going to teach forward chaining. We're going to teach, teach using forward chaining. We're going to teach making a sandwich in the naturally occurring order. Let's say you grab the bread, you grab the ingredients, and you proceed to make the sandwich. You're going to teach the first step first and prompt through the rest. And we're going to reinforce on that first step with independence and then go through it. And then the next time around, we're going to reinforce for one and two and then go through it. Now, backward chaining is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to teach this task backwards, starting with the last step. So instead of starting at one, we might start at six and reinforce here. We're going to prompt all the way up to here until the final step is done independently. At that point, they receive reinforcement. Backward chaining is very good when maybe your learner is bad at starting tasks, starting new tasks, or they engage in a lot of escape because escape is going to function as a reinforcement for completing that last step. And then total task chaining, which is just a variation of forward chaining, we're going to teach all the steps. So we'll teach one through six all together. Sometimes it's called whole task. Sometimes it's called total task. We're going to teach all the steps all together until the learner can do every single one in order. Total task chaining is good if you've got a quick learner or let's say they already know most of the steps. It's just more efficient to teach everything all at once. One more note on the behavior chain interruption strategy or the BCIS. You might see this, this acronym sometimes. This is when we have taught a chain. That's very important. The essential steps of the chain need to be known first before we can do a behavior chain interruption strategy. Because with the BCIS, let's say we have a four step chain, one, two, three, four. With the BCIS, we're trying to evoke a new behavior. So what we would do is let's say we're gonna interrupt the chain here. And so at two, we're gonna change something in the environment where the chain gets interrupted and the hope is we get a brand new response out of it. Because in the natural environment, in the real world, behavior chains aren't perfect, right? Things happen, the environment changes. And so once we've taught the full chain, we wanna start using interruption to start evoking new behaviors. So in case we're not there, or the learner is engaged in this chain and in a different location, they won't be caught off guard by sudden changes or disruptions in the chain. Again, very important to remember for the for the behavior chain interruption strategy that you want the essential steps of the chain to be known first. And that's chaining. It's very, very straightforward. Again, these are the fundamentals. You've got to be fluent in the fundamentals. And don't just go through it once and say, I've got it. We have to know this like the back of our hand. Only then do we advance to some of the more complex ideas. So chaining very straightforward, right? Start with the task analyses, create the chain, teach the chain, start interrupting the chain. Please subscribe for all of our updates. We post weekly. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. We also have RBT materials available on our channel. As always, when you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.